So here we are with 2.5. Uh, 2.5 builds off 2.4, which is the introduction of the sine and cosine ratios. The last class we looked at calculating the angles, and now we're going to look at calculating the lengths. So again, we want to recall from the last class exactly what the sine ratio and this cosine ratio are. Sine of the angle is the opposite over hypotenuse. And cos of the angle is adjacent over hypotenuse. So opposite sine, adjacent cos. So just like the tangent ratio, when we're looking for a length, we have to do a few things. First of all, we want to get that length by itself isolated in the equation. You want to determine the sine or the cos of the angle, whichever one you're going to be using. And then you're going to solve for that unknown side. So very similar steps to the tangent. Isolate, sine or cos, solve. Let's look at an example here. Solve for x and y. Okay, so now this is a little bit easier in terms of we've only got one angle to work with. This one here is 51. So I could solve for the x and the y all based off of angle 51. So I don't have to relabel my triangle. Labeling opposite adjacent hypotenuse. Well, longest one. I don't know these sides, so I can't use the longest idea. But here's my 90. Cross from the 90 is the hypotenuse. Here's my angle 51 through the angle, through the triangle, opposite. Which means touching the angle is the adjacent. So we're going to solve for the x first. Now, which side do I know? I know the hypotenuse, so I need to have the hypotenuse in my formula. What side am I looking for? Well, I'm looking for my opposite side. So ask yourself, which formula deals with the opposite and the hypotenuse? And if we go up to our formulas, we can see that the opposite and hypotenuse, well, that's the sine law. So I'll come back down, and I'll write down the sine formula. Sine of the angle is the opposite over hypotenuse. Okay, I plug in what I know. I know the angle, so I'll go sine of 51 equals the opposite. I don't know. I'll leave that as x divided by the hypotenuse, which is 9. Okay, so I plugged everything in. I am now going to isolate the x. It's being divided by 9, so I'm going to times everything by 9. So 9 times the sine of 51. So I'm going to go to my calculator. And again, most of you will type in 51, and then the sine. And your display to four decimal places should be 0 0.7771. Now there are going to be a few of you who are going to do the opposite. You're going to have to hit the sine first and then 51. But your calculator, the sine of 51, should be 0 0.7771. And of course this is going to equal x. And my last step is to times 9 by 0 0.7771. And I should get 6.99 and a whole bunch of other numbers. But of course all of our final answers get rounded to one decimal place, so this could go to 7.0. Now in this particular question, I do know that my measurements will be in feet because there's a unit on the one that I know, so I can say the answer here is 7 feet. Okay, let's uh, switch to solve for y. Now like we said, the angle is still 51, so I'm using the same angle, but the labels are going to be the same as well. So hypotenuse, opposite, adjacent. So what do I know? Well, I know the hypotenuse is 9. 
Now I do also know the opposite. I just calculated it, so I could write this to be 7 feet in here. So I could use the cosine formula, adjacent and hypotenuse, and technically I could use the tan formula, opposite adjacent. But this lesson's all about the sine and the cos, so I'm going to use the sine and the cos. So cos of the angle is the adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Plug in what I know. I know the angle's 51. So cos of 51 equals the adjacent divided by 9. Okay, same steps to isolate. I'm dividing by 9, so I'm going to multiply by 9. And I'll have 9 times the cos of 51. When we go to our calculator, 51 cos, we should get 0.6293. And that's going to be the adjacent. Or I could have called it y, same idea. Last thing is to multiply through. 9 times 0.6293. 5.48 which occurs to one decimal place would round to 5.5 .5 with a unit of feet. So, sine, opposite hypotenuse, cos, adjacent hypotenuse. Okay, let's go at the next page. Now, it says solve for x and y, and I realize that they're not x and y, but they're rather a and b. So here's a, here's b. On this one, the diagram's a little bit more difficult to understand. Uh, the angle is actually outside the triangle, so I'm going to rewrite that. 30 is right here. So again, labeling, hypotenuse across from the 90. opposite through the angle, through the triangle, leaving this to be my adjacent. So I'm going to solve for A first. So A has my opposite. Which side do I know? I know the hypotenuse. Opposite hypotenuse is sine. So sine of A equals opposite over hypotenuse. Let me plug in what I know. The angle is 30. So sine of 30 is going to be the opposite divided by 120. i got to solve for the opposite. It's being divided by 100, so I'm going to times it by 100 both sides, 120. So I get the 120 times the sine of 30. I go to my calculator, 30 sine, and that's 0.5, which equals the opposite. And finally, 120 times 0.5, it's half of it, is 60. So I'll throw on 60 for my opposite. Now again, no units, so 60 is my best answer. And finally, let's get B. Now B, we could do the same old cos, which is the adjacent and the hypotenuse, but I'm going to use opposite now. I calculate to be 60, opposite and adjacent, well that's 10. See, I've got options. Tan of B, or tan of the angle, is going to be the opposite over the adjacent. So tan of the angle, we got tan of 30, 
is going to be 60 over the adjacent. So here we've got that problem again with the adjacent being in the denominator. So I'm going to just simply switch it out. And I'll get the adjacent to be 60 divided by the tan of 30. If we just switch their positions, it allows me to isolate the adjacent much easier. So I now go to my calculator to the tan of 30. So I'm going to have the adjacent is 60 divided by, type in 30, type in tan. We should get 0 0.5774 to four decimal places. And finally, the last thing I do is take 60 and divide it by 0.5774. Now be careful you're doing this in the right order. You need to go 60 divided by 0.5774. A lot of people will have this in their display from doing the tan of 30 and then try dividing by 60. But that would mean that the numerator and denominator would be switched. and That's not what we have here. So you really have to clear your calculator. Type in 60 divided by 0.5774 and the adjacent should be 103.9 rounded properly to one decimal place. So you can see that once you have your first side, you always have options on which formula you want to use to get your second side. First example, we kept it simple, sine and cos. In the second example, we used our own answer to get the tan to get b. Now, my personal preference is to always use numbers provided from the question. There's a chance, however, small it might be, we may have made a mistake calculating 60. And if we make a mistake with calculating 60, then when we use it in calculating the B, we'll make that mistake as well. So I tend to use numbers given to me, but technically I can use the number I calculated. Let's go to our textbook please. Page 101, 1A, 5B, 1C.